Ah, uh, it's Holly Hotspurs back with another one. Chatting all things Tottenham, we're second to none. Special guests every time, if it's win, lose or draw. The passion is high, like Harry Kane when he scores. Or when Lloris makes a world class save. We got Hoybier running the mid every game. Settle down, stick around, say your thoughts with the panel. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Coys. Hello and welcome to another episode of Hot Live, where tonight, although it was a draw against Liverpool away from home, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm sure we'll get into all of that during the show. But with me tonight, our three fabulous guests. I want to welcome Denman, because it's obviously his first time. Denman, how are you this evening? Thank you for having me on. I'm good, man. Hey, that intro is cold, by the way. <laughs> it's <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> It's sick. The first thing, I was just head bopping. I was thinking, yeah, this is sick. This is sick. But <laughs> now, thanks for having me on, man. I'm happy to be here. Happy to, um, I would say happy to talk about Tottenham, but we'll get on to that, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's good to be here. It's nice to meet the boys and yourself. Nice, no, nice. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, and also we have Con Connor. Welcome us back to the channel, mate. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Uh, you know, getting over that, how we didn't win that, you know. Um, but yeah, no, good. Ready to, you know, I'm, I'm just happy we didn't lose, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. It's nice, like you say, to, to get something from Liverpool. I think we were, I know we'll get into it, but I think we're all quite pleased that we've got something from that game. And also, welcoming back to the channel, we also have George. George, how are you this evening as well, mate? Yeah, I'm all good. Thanks for having me back on. And obviously, pleasure to meet you guys as well. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking about this and talking about the end of the season, what it means. Well, 100%. We're getting down proper to the crunch time now. Um, but obviously, before we even get on to obviously what happened in the game, I think we should obviously start with the lineup. And obviously, we saw in the previous game that Lucas started over Decky, but Denman, I think it was right to obviously uh, Kuzleski start back in that starting 11. Yeah, it had to happen, man. I think we all know, like, obviously, I love Lucas more personally. Like, I like him. I know what he's done for the club and that. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's not a starter for us. Kuzleski's the man who needs to start. He's the one who can. He's, when he gets the ball, you just know that his end product's going to be good. You know, like, his whole mindset when playing football and, like, his whole footballing brain is just it is superior to Lucas Moore. And it feels sad saying that because I really do like Lucas Moore as a person. But um, he just brings us so much more to the team with just just everything what he does, like, in every way, shape or form. Like, he fits the mould of, like, what Con the way Conte wants to play as well. And, uh, yeah, you can see the difference he's made coming into our team as well. And I was happy to see him start. And I didn't really expect anyone else to start. We kind of know our lineup, which is going on at the moment, until, obviously, Skip comes back. And then that would be interesting to see if uh, Skip has to fight his way back into the team or not. But, yeah, with Kulu being in the team, only good things are going to come. 100%. And I'm glad you mentioned that as well, because, obviously, last week we were all kind of a bit... I was a bit stunned to see that, obviously, Decky was not starting in the starting eleven for that game. But, mm. Connor, I think he is he was fully rested for Liverpool, which I think, in hindsight, kind of the reason why Conte <clears throat> didn't start him previously. Yeah, Defo, uh, as, as Demon said as well, yeah, he settled so well, honestly. Like, it's crazy to think that someone we signed in January, even Benzker as well, they've just settled and they're already starters. And, you know, if they're out the team, we're going, why are they not starting, you know? Um, he just offers so much more and he, Lucas is great, you know, bombing forward with the runs and it's fine. But I think against Liverpool, naturally, you know, we, we're probably going to get on to how critical Klopp was. We don't need to go into that. <laughs> um, but I think, um, I think you know, Decky was always just going to suit the system better anyway on the counter and everything. So it was, yeah, it was the right decision definitely to rest him and it paid off, you know, so... 100%. And obviously, as well as uh, Decky starting, George, we also see that Cess plays instead of Reglan. I'm not too sure what's going on with Reggie at the moment. They were saying it was a thigh injury or something along those lines. Were you imp impressed by, obviously, Sessignon as well? We'll get into the other facts that Sessignon did in that game. But it was nice to see him adapting and playing well against Liverpool. Yeah, I mean, I think um, well, he's had 180 minutes against Salah now and stopped him twice. So I think it's, uh, <laughs> I think he had, I think he had a great game. And look, I think he's he's another player as well. It's obviously, he's been under criticism in a few games, um, likewise with Reguilón. Anyway, I think, I think the thing with Sessignon for me personally, from what I've seen, I, I loved him when he was at Fulham because he was very brave and obviously like in the Championship he was just like, constantly attacking defenders, trying to get in behind. And I felt like. In his first couple of years at Spurs, I don't know if he just felt like a sort of a small fish in a big pond, but he just sort of never really tried to take on any any defenders. He would sort of get the ball out wide and almost instantly pass it back inwards or pass it back. So it's nice to see in these last few games that, you know, Conte's put trust in him and he's actually trying to get round players. And look, for the goal that we got, he, he was in the box and was the one that set up Sun in the first place. So I think 
if more of that and develops the way he's going, I think it'd be great. So, yeah, I think he's slowly sort of making that position his own um, ahead of Reguilón. A hundred percent. And like you say, you, you said that he's pocketed Salah twice now. And it is true. But I was also impressed, Dem, and how the way that he pinned Trent back. Because I don't think Trent was really on his A game either, having Sessegnon on that side too. It's kind of similar to what George said. Like, he actually, yesterday was like the first time I've proper seen him play with confidence, actually go at defenders. And it doesn't surprise me that he actually got the better of him a good few times as well. Like, just pinning him back down to their bar line and just actually trying to attack him just makes a sense. Like, he's got the speed for it. He's obviously got the quality as well. I don't know why he don't do it more often, to be honest with you. I think maybe, like George said, he felt like maybe like a small fish in a big pond kind of thing. That might be why he was like that. Maybe he's got a bit more confidence now. Maybe he feels like he didn't want to step like a foot out of place kind of thing, like when he first come in that. But it's good to see him just attack. I want to see this more, I'll be real. I want to see it more. I want to see him attacking and just going at defenders. Because I don't mind if... I don't mind if our fullbacks lose the ball up the pitch. Like, if they're going to actually take risks and try and attack their defenders. Because that's how goals come. And that's how a lot of our chances... Not a lot of our chances, but a few of our chances come. We've got a few corners from it as well. From him just literally attacking Trent and making him feel uncomfortable. And he just needs to do it more. And I'm happy to see that. Don't get me wrong. In my opinion, I think we still need two sets of new fullbacks coming in in the summer. 100% if we want to take us to the next level. But at the same time... I think he could still be a similar player to kind of Ben Davies, not in terms of like what positions they play, but in terms of like squad rotations. And I'd happily have him in the squad next season, knowing that he can come in if he's going to play with that confidence as well, being like a backup left left wing back kind of thing, in my yeah, opinion, okay. anyway. No, it is interesting you say that because I think with Cess, like we've all kind of alluded to at the moment, that it is a confidence thing. And I like the fact, kind of, that he's taken this opportunity since Regulon is, is out of the picture at the moment to really thrive off it. Definitely. Yeah, I, I think he felt like he needed to, to be honest. I know sort of saying the big fish in a small pond thing, but I think he was unfortunate with the injuries as well. You know, he's it was hard for him to sort of build up any rhythm. So, yeah, I, I think um, I think going forward, you'd you'd have Cess over Reggie right now because Reggie, for me at least, hasn't been himself for, for a while. And um, it's healthy to have that competition. So I don't know what we're going to do in the summer. Like, like, um, like Demon said as well, we definitely need fullbacks on each side, but whether it means that Reggie goes, who knows, but we're definitely sort of going forward, keeping Sess and using him, um, whether it be rotation or whether it be more minutes, he gets stronger um, is, is a great idea. Yeah. Mm. And it's a great idea as well, like the way that you said the consistency thing, because again, getting more minutes on your belt means more confidence. And we've seen in that it's working with him at the moment. Obviously we've spoken about one fullback. I think, I rightly deserve to give a little bit of credit to Emerson because I probably have been a bit of a critic towards him, but he was class yesterday, uh, wasn't he, George? Yeah, I mean, don't worry, we, we've all been. Oh, I'm pretty sure we've all been <laughs> quite critical of him <laughs> recently. So no, I was, I was even during the game. I was like, I was thoroughly impressed with him. I thought he was probably, probably his best performance in a Spurs shot. I'd say. Um, obviously, there was a couple moments here and there where you think if he just had that little bit of better quality of crossing, you know, the one where. Was it Sun wanted it along the floor and he sort of went high back post assess? Um, mm. It's moments like that that obviously he still needs improving. But to be honest with you, I think the the whole like double up plan of him and Kulusevski on on Diaz sort of worked for pretty much the whole game. Um, he was obviously again similar to Cess, had that sort of confidence and actually was getting forward when he could and delivering those crosses in. So yeah, I think I think he played well, man. And, and, and there's uh, look, I've been critical of him as well, like like everyone else has, and I agree with them. said we obviously do need fullbacks as well. But again, he's another player that I, I don't think I would mind having him as a as a backup for the for the right wing back as long as he can continue to develop and not just you know after this performance now just go back to being a sort of shady defender and just. <laughs> Giving away balls. And, and Go back to being Emerson. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but every, we all got to remember, though, he is, he is only, what, 22 years old, brand new country. It is a new position for him. He has just been an mm. out and out right, right back before. So to be a wing back now is, is, is a change for him. So, yeah, I'm just happy to see him do well. And we just sort of need that to continue while Doherty's out, especially. A hundred percent. And it is interesting you say that he's still young, he's still this, but I think for Spurs fans, we just expect so much because of the previous mm. fullbacks we've had. And it is obviously a, a, a position we need to work on. But like I said, I just want to give him a bit of credit because there was, a, I think there was an instance <laughs> towards the end of the game, Demon, where the ball comes in, he mistimes the header, but he still manages to get that tackle in. And I must yeah, say, yeah, yeah. previous games, I, I would have been screaming because he would have given away a penalty or something ridiculous. To, to be fair, when that happened, my heart was in my mouth. I low-key thought he was just <laughs> going to get banged across the goal into the bottom corner because you're so used to seeing that happen with Tottenham. Like, just yeah. mess up or something, get our feet in a muddle and then just literally get in the back of the net. But nah, he, he, I, was, I was surprised. I'll be real. I was surprised he got back to it, to be fair. Like, like George said, like he was just he was good yesterday. He was very, very good. And I'm I've been not I've been highly critical of him in 
like kind of behind closed doors, like not on Twitter and stuff. I kind of kept it, kept my opinion quiet on him. Um, before this game, I generally just think he's a bit of a mess, if honest, just going forward when he's got the ball in his feet. Just, he just panics when he's on the ball and stuff. But saying that, we've all had our opinions on players. Like, for example, Doc, he didn't really mould into the team too well when he first came. Granted, he was being played out of position, like, firstly. But um, when he got a set of games going under his belt, and then he ended up moving to left back, left wing back as well, got a goal and assist. So, like, with these kind of players, I guess it is kind of more so a time thing. And like George says, like, his age as well. I don't really know what to take, what my take is on Emerson at the moment, I'll be honest, because I see, feel like this happens a lot in a Tottenham shirt. You kind of get used to a player and you sit there and think, right, they're, they're not too good, are they? Let's be honest, they're not good enough for Spurs. And then they'll pull out a good performance, this recency bias kind of thing, and you kind of sit mm. there thinking, yeah, maybe he will be good. Like, So I don't know, man, maybe give him a bit more time, see how the end of the season pans out, sees what Conte wants to do, because if he's going to bring in a new set of fullbacks, I highly doubt we're going to keep three, three sets of fullbacks in the squad. So... He's going to want to get rid of one of them on either side as well. So it'll be interesting to see who he sticks with. And I'll be honest, whoever, I'm very much one of those fans. If Conte thinks that's right for the team, 99% of the time I'm going to back his decision yeah, and I just agree. go with it because <sighs> I don't know how we got him in the first place. I'll be real. He shouldn't be coming to Tottenham. I'll be honest with you. Like, Conte shouldn't be coming to manage Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. I know we're a massive club and that, but at the same time, like, we had no right in getting him. Like, we had no right in getting him. He's a top-class manager. He's a world-class manager. And, like, I think it's one of those ones where we just kind of just got to back the manager, regardless of what he decides to do, and just see where he can take us. Because I think, I know it's a dangerous word to say, but I think he can deliver us trophies. I feel like I've been in this position for before. When, <laughs> when, 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 Mourinho. When, 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 when Mourinho come in, I did kind of sit there and think, yeah, if anyone's going to win a trophy, it's going to be this man. We sat them before the final. But that's another conversation we can get on to. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, yeah, albeit, like, Whenever Conor does something, I do tend to back it. And going back to the fullback conversation, I do think two of them will be leaving. And uh, whichever one he decides, I'll back that decision. If he keeps Emerson, then fair play. I'll be right behind him. One hundred percent. I think it is interesting. You say that you want to back him because we all want that to come from the board as well. And we, <laughs> that could have happened with Jose, but obviously it didn't pan out with that. So I agree with what you say. If Conte believes that's what he wants to do, then I'll be behind it. But mm. Conor, I want to get your kind of take on Emerson. Are you kind of feeling that maybe this is a consistency thing as well with setting on in the terms of the fact that if you play him in that position each week, he's going to get better? Or do you think this is just a, a one-off cameo from him? Oh, it, it's a tough one because oh, like, I, I, I'm really happy that I could sit there and I could say Emerson had a good game of football. And like I... I oh, I've been very unfair. Like I've I've said, I don't think he's a footballer. Like you know, um, <laughs> really, which is not a nice thing to say. Obviously, um, I've tried to be very tame with it, but I, I think, I mean, for me, the Liverpool performance showed there is a footballer there. There is there is someone, but I just don't know if the consistency in the more games is going to do it. Just I, I don't know. I just it's it's a really hard one. Um, but like like Demon said, if if Conte turned around and said, "Oh, I want to keep Emerson over every all the other fullbacks," then then you are going to back it because we are not going to get any better than Antonio Conte. I've said this several times. We will not. He is the man. We just have to do what he wants. Um, so yeah, so you know what? Yeah, see see how we get on for the rest of the season because we've got no other options. We've got no Doherty. Um, you know, Reggie might still be out as well. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it pans out. I mean. I just don't want him to make any more mistakes. Honestly, I just mm. I really want the best for him. I really want him to to smash it here. So yeah, so we'll see, we'll see, and then we'll then we'll go from there. I think. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. We never want a player to fail. It's just so frustrating when he can have an amazing game like that, and you're just hoping on on dreaded Thursday that it's not a really bad performance. But you're hoping after Liverpool, he's played up to that game. You're hoping he's going to play up to Thursday. But obviously, I think another thing we kind of also have to talk about is the fact that we've got that Rolls-Royce in the middle again. And I talk about him every week, but against Liverpool, I think the fact that those wing-backs were playing so well, I think it does come from the Rolls-Royce in the middle, doesn't it, George? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quickly becoming one of my favourite <laughs> favorite players, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I think, look, uh, credit to all three centre-backs. In, in that game as well. I think, what was the stat? It was like 28 combined blocks and clearances between the three of them, just against Liverpool alone. Bearing in mind, this is supposed to be the world's best attack that we're, <laughs> we're coming up against, supposedly, according to Liverpool what, fans. cross and pray? Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, man, I, like, I think that they've all done extremely well. But it, it, it's still a position we obviously need improvement in because I think, like we've, we've probably sort of alluded to, the... 
as well as they've they've done under Conte, Conte wants to win the league. There's no denying that. That's just the sort of manager he is. So we need we need to get world class players in for that. And I just don't necessarily think they're quite at that level. But um, I think Romero is one that is showing that he has potential to be probably one of the best in the Premier League already. Bear in mind again, mm. he's another one that's extremely young, has just come into the team, had a tough start in the sense that he got a, a, a big injury fairly early on, nothing to do with Spurs, out with Argentina. Um, and has come back and has just looked so comfortable already, just going in hard on tackle. He doesn't care who the player is, doesn't stand off. And I feel like that's a player that we've missed for a long, long time. How many times have we said that we've played too nice in um, in, in games and just sort of stood off players? Um, so I think mm. having someone like Romero is just going to completely change this team. And yeah, I'm just loving him every <laughs> every week. Something new is happening and another tackle is going hard on a player and I can't wait for him to do it to Saka this week as well. So. <laughs> No, I do love that. And like you say, it is true. We we haven't had a player like that in a long time that will put his body on the line, uh, Demon. It's that kind of your sentiment as well. It's nice to see a player that will go out and do something with the Spurs show on and, and believe that as well. Well, Romero's crazy. Romero is crazy. I love it. Like, I absolutely love it. Like, when I see him play, I just feel comfortable. If he's up against anyone going at him, I feel comfortable he's going to get the ball. I love as well how, like, when we're sat back in our five, if someone's taking the piss in the middle of the park from the other team, he's just going to sprint out and clatter him and get the ball. As well. I love it how he just drives out of position. Dye will move across to the right and just cover it. Like one of the midfielders will sit back a little bit and he'll just go out on his mad little runs. But he always ends up getting the ball or putting in like a crazy challenge. I just love it. I think the only, only thing I could be critical of, and this is me being petty if I had to be critical of him, would just be maybe like set pieces, just picking up his man. I know, some, I know we've reverted to um, not man-to-man marking really now which probably helps him out. But like, there's been a couple of times where maybe he's left his man and stuff. But that's that's me being so critical. Like, that's how good he is. Like, I generally think like George says, he's up there, even now, as one of the best centre-backs in the Premier League. Like, by a long shot. And this is also another thing, similar to like how I said, I can't believe we got Conte. I don't know how we got Romero. Like, I like how I don't know how any other team haven't, haven't got in from and got him. Like, I just don't, it, it doesn't, like come in my brain and like and tell me like yeah we got him because of this reason like it's just mad like I don't bear know in mind at the time him. we had Nuno and Europa Conference yeah football literally and we lit- to come to Spurs. <laughs> literally like I just, I, this is all the same season yeah it's, can, yeah, yeah it's mad I just don't know how we got him he's incredible and he will go on to be one of the Premiership's greatest like strike um sorry defenders like this year hundred percent and next year coming up and in years to come. I that think what crazy. shocks me the most is that Juve didn't even spot it because obviously he was at Juve and sort of on loan mm. to at, uh, Atlanta, and yet they didn't want they didn't want him back. Obviously, that, I know they had the clause in that Atlanta yeah. just triggered to keep him and obviously sell on. But even still, it's amazing that they didn't sort of pick up on it as like a future star for <laughs> for Juve. Yeah, it's mental. I, I don't know, man. I just think I just think he's he's incredible, and I'm so happy we've got him as well. And I think it brings the best out of Dyer as well because it's safe to say yeah. Dyer has been brilliant for us as well. And um, a lot of other fans won't notice this. I'm a big advocate for this, like. I feel like as football fans, we're so quick to ju- jump on other teams' players when we rarely watch them play. And for me, like I never really tend to gun down a player unless I've actually watched them play. And I feel like a lot of other fans don't see how good Dyer actually is for us. And I think Dyer's been great. Mm. I think he's been really good. And I think it's and I, I, to be honest with you, I love Ben Davis. Ben Davis has been brilliant for us. I think we do need another centre back in, like another kind of Romero kind of player, like a big unit who's going to come in and really stamp their place on the team. Maybe like a Diaz or like. Someone similar to like Diaz, Van Dijk, like just someone massive who's just going to do the business. Do you know what I mean? Like a Rudiger or something. Someone, like, I can't stand Rudiger, but as a centre back, like he's crazy good. Mm-hmm. Like just someone like that to fill in Ben Davis's spot. And, I, and I'd happily go into next season with Dyer at centre back. I'll be honest with you. Like Dyer, Romero, maybe like one more sign into the centre back. I think, the, like I think the back three just, just very quickly, I think the back three helps Dyer massively because yeah. I think a lot of his issues in the last couple of years have come with the fact that he's, after that big injury he had, he sort of lost his mobility a bit. Like he was, mm. he, he seems a lot slower and when chasing down players, so obviously usually when we're playing the back four, if he's one of the two, he's constantly having to run after players, coming back and he just, it, it seemed to get lost underneath him. Whereas now he's mm-hmm. obviously the one holding it back. Romero is pushing aggressive. Davis is the one going out wide to support whoever's at left wing back. So he yeah. can just basically be there and sort of be the leader and command the back. And I think he's doing a brilliant job at it, to be honest. No, I love uh, it, man. Yeah, and I'm glad that you guys have kind of pointed on that because it is, it's that kind of stability that we, we've needed in a long time. And like you said, Romero can be 
a nutcase in senses. You're looking at the pitch and he's in the box having a shot himself and you're thinking, hang on a minute, mate, if they break now. But it is crazy how he has come to Spurs. But God, I want to get your kind of thoughts because there was a little bit in the first half, I think, I think it was the Van Dijk corner that hit the post. Obviously, again, we spoke, Gemini's spoken a little bit on our marking, but it was left free. And it's just little moments and laps of concentration and things like that that drives me insane. I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I think we, we've still got a lot to learn, to be honest. We're still very early days with Conte. You know, I mean, I know he's not the, the longest term manager ever, but if he is happy, then he'll then he'll stay. But yeah, we, we've still got so much to learn. But again, back back to Romero, I, I wake up every morning and I'm like, how is Christian Romero a Tottenham player? Honestly, how have we pulled this off? I, I just cannot get my head round it, seriously. And like, like Denman said as well, he's He's commanded and he's made the players around him look better as well. So I think those lapses of judgment will hopefully... So, some people could argue that they're, they're the sort of stuff that you can't coach out of players, but I, I'm confident that Conte can coach everything out of the players. Like, the, you know, all the... I don't know. Maybe I've got, I've got too, much, uh, too much faith in that sense. But yeah, I, I, think, um, I think, yeah, I think definitely we're going to have moments like that. But if you've got someone like Romero who is making the players around them stronger, like Dyer, who again should definitely be next to him next season. Davis, probably massive fan of Davis, very reliable, but we actually have got to move on from that really. Um, I, I think, I think, yeah, I think we'll only get better with, with decision-making like that. But again, as well, we're saying Romero when he goes in on challenges is in, is insane. And he is like, you know, the, the Henderson challenge should have potentially given the other card, but, being the others but anyway anyway that's something different but um yeah but but in general he we need someone who is a nutter someone who is gonna rile up the players who's gonna rile up everything and he is the guy for that i mean he even carries the ball up the pitch you know so many times we're sitting back and he will pick it up and then it'll be like in the final third and you're like what are you doing mate like do you know what i'm saying so yeah so i, I think we will get better with that it will just be you know later on, you know, after Conte's have more time to build that solid defensive unit. And it is great that you, you speak about that because also thinking on that kind of sense as well, that you can possibly coach out the bits where you're thinking to yourself, actually, I don't think Romero needs to go on that run there or you don't need to go so hard on that tackle. But it is nice to have someone because we did have someone like that and that was Lamela. But obviously... That was just hit inbred within him, as in that was just the head case, full stop. There was. Oh, he's a maniac. He was a he's, maniac. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Argentine blood, it seems. Yeah, <laughs> literally, sure. he was just a maniac. Lamela, I love him, but he was a maniac, man. And it, it, but I hope with Romero, like you say, we can kind of coach him and mould him to remain cool and not go off like a head case. Because I know, I know, he's nowhere near Lamela, but he's got that kind of stinge within it, if that makes sense. But obviously, mm. we went into half time at nil nil. And then Sonny, of all people, manages to go and get that goal. And obviously, it was a cross from Sessie Young. So, George, I come to you. How happy were you to see that that goal go in from Sonny? Oh. I won't get onto the point where my dad sat on the remote, so I didn't get to see it live. So, oh, I'll come no. to you <laughs> on how you felt when that ball went into the back of the net. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously, I was, I was at the game. So, that was just probably one of the best celebrations and scenes we've <laughs> we've had in the win all season. Just because it just felt so... It was so amazing. Like, after all... All, all that work and obviously having to dig deep to sort of just stop Liverpool having any chances they had to then go up the other end and grab the first goal was just, uh, it was unbelievable. And of course, the form that Sonny's in sort of this year, well, the goal scoring form he's in is, it's, of course, it's going to be him <laughs> on the end of it. So, yeah, honestly, unbelievable, unbelievable scenes. Um, yeah. Lovely stuff. I like that. I say I wish I watched it in lifetime, but that's another <laughs> matter. Um, but it is true, Denman, because obviously Son is the only Spurs player uh, to bag 20 goals in a single Premier League season um, that are not penalties. And obviously he's joined the yeah. list of Bale, uh, showing him uh, Klingsman and Kane's obviously done it five times. But how important is Sonny at the moment for us? Crazy. Same, same, same way he's been as important in the last like five years. But it's brilliant to see like, him step like think people are saying Kane's having an off season. I don't think he's having an off season personally. He's just not scoring as many goals. I think he's still doing what Kane does and he's just still being like the pinnacle of our attack kind of thing. He's just doing it in a different way. And Sun's now stepping up and bagging in the goals for him. Do you know what I mean? And I think as well, just a touch on Kane for that goal as well. It's so easy for many strikers when they get in that position where like you've been pinned back against the Liverpool side all game. You've not had many stiffs at goal to just let rip and shoot. Because I can't be honest, when, I'll be honest, when he was running towards the goal, I thought he was going to shoot with his left foot. I thought, yeah, Kane's going to probably wrap this top bins or just over or something. But he didn't. He slipped in, Seth, Seth played it across and it was perfect for Sun just to tap it in kind of thing. But um, 
it just shows the qualities of Son, to be fair. He knows where to be in the right position at the right time and that. And he's easily one of the best footed players in the world. Like easily one of like the best two footed players in the world. Sorry. So it's good to have someone like that. And also you just know whenever somebody's got the ball, you feel like he's going to score, don't you? Like whenever he's through on goal, like it's, I know other fans don't really have the, what's the word? Like not the pleasure, but they don't really have the, um, they're not really fortunate enough to have players in their club where if they go through one on one or something, you know, they're going to bag it. And when with Son and Kane, I feel like we're lucky enough to kind of expect them to finish every chance they get like in the area. And if they don't, it's like, wow, what's happened there kind of thing. But now in regards to your question about how important some has been for us, crazy important. And I think the, the story's not finished yet for this season. I'll be honest. I think he's going to still be more important for us. And I think he's going to get some more goals. And also obviously chasing Salah for the golden boot. I think we've been in this position before where our season has been done and we've wanted Kane to go and get the golden boot. Obviously, I think it was against Hull and Leicester. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. When uh, when he scored, I think he scored like seven in two games, something crazy seven, like that. Yeah. yeah, that was that was mad. Like again, aside to celebrate, I guess about even our season was done. But um, obviously, our season's not done yet. If we're gonna be, if we're gonna sit there and be like excited and think, oh, the Arsenal might drop points, kind of thing. But I think going into obviously the the Arsenal game, Sun's on fire in form. I think the boys have been high spirits after what's happened at Liverpool, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Sun just bagging a few more goals to hopefully clinch us that Champions League spot. 100%. I so hope so. But again, (laughs) the way you speak about Kane as well, the fact, it is a good point because I didn't even think of it. It it shows how well the team are gelling together on an attack. Because, Mm. Connor, I don't know if you noticed as well, there was hardly anyone in the Liverpool defence in the box for that ball to come across the box. It shows that we we managed to open them up. Absolutely. Uh, How how well drilled are they all that they can all make that, that move and like you say, exploit the fact that there isn't really any Liverpool players around, I, th- I think. And that's just credit to the way the system, the way you put the system out. You know, I think in terms of Sonny, and I'm going to sound insane with this potentially, but for me, I don't think he's had his, in terms of goals, he's had his best season. But I think personally, he's had a couple of games a season where he's been completely missing. And you know what? I don't even care at this point because to, to be on 20 goals, to, to, have, to have been so pivotal when, mm. you know, like, like, like Demon said as well, Kane is fantastic and yeah all right he was slow at the start of the season but you know he's not just goals how many pivotal passes does he pick out a game his, his role has just evolved a little bit he's not just a goal scorer anymore he's the one picking out all those passes being being a sort of playmaker so yeah so yeah the way the way the players gelled for that goal was was evident of the of the system and how well it was but yeah i, I think in general like sunny definitely can go and get the golden boot and i would it would be insane from my, from what I think at least, because as I say, I don't even think this has been the best season in terms of performances. I think, yeah, yeah, there's there there is more to come though, definitely. I love that as well, and it is true. I think some games, I, I think we do not overhype Sonny. I think there's at times when we're we're not as critical as we can be. But if you say, like you said, he has gone missing some games, but he's still pumping out like goals and assists the way he is and it just shows there is more to come from him and it is exciting um I want to come to you George because obviously sadly I I thought we were going to hold it I thought we were going to come away with all three points but unfortunately the deflected goal from Diaz it it did come off Ben Tenkori's little foot and you think yourself he's put his body on the line it's unfortunately got in I know it was devastating but it just in the way it happened wasn't it really yeah I think it's it was praising all like the defenders so much like the whole game and it still do because obviously like they like you said they they have put their body on the lines like, I remember that block from Davis um, to stop I think was it a Salah shot like the, the players were doing so well and and there's you, you can't you can't blame any of the players for that at all because what they're not going to just let the player shoot they have to do everything and it's just mm. it's glitched in we've managed to stop Diaz all game it's just completely wrong footed uh, the Reese there's absolutely nothing you can do about it I, I think it's just. It's just so unlike. It feels like it's every year though at Anfield, we always just seem. Oh yes, we're saying the chat. Every year, there's always like, this one moment, like the Bergwijn hitting the post or or whatever it may be. It's just something that seems to get in, in the way. And now it was obviously that, and then Hoybjerg missing that header, which I don't know how much we're gonna we're gonna go into that because I didn't even want to look at it back. I was that I was that fuming <laughs> at his decision making in that moment. But yeah, it it to me when it, it felt a a bit like a loss just because. Not totally, but just purely for the fact that we we knew we needed the win mm. to really bring forth into our hands and not have to rely on someone else. 
But you still have to, you know, give credit to the players and everyone for putting an amazing shift and the fact that we're actually pretty disappointed we didn't get the three points at Anfield again. Yeah, that's that's the thing. To sit here and be disappointed after you've gone to Anfield and managed to get a point, it just kind of shows how well we did play. And I'm glad, uh, George, that you did mention, obviously, that Hoiberg miss because we're going to get into it. And again, my mate behind me, who's still got the bag on his head, Harry Winks came on and I thought, oh, my Lord, please don't bring him on. But he did put a cross in to Hoiberg, Denman, and you're thinking to yourself, why on earth are you heading it across goal? Like, come on. The goal is right there, mate. Well, when it landed in there, I was like, this is it. Like, you know, when you just go silent and you're just waiting for something to happen, waiting for the ball to hit the back of the net. Like, there's so many things which could have happened there. I think it was assessed behind him coming in. I can't remember uh, if it was assessed behind him coming remember. in, but I know someone was coming in. I feel like... Uh, Bergwijn. Bergwijn, Bergwijn was well sorry, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking, bro, just leave. Like, when it was coming in, I thought it was just... I thought he was just going to leave it and it was going to go to Bergwijn just to bang in. And then when it comes to him, I was thinking, bro, just go for goal. And then the head across and it just got intercepted. You know what? It's just unlucky. It was so unlucky, man. Like, I know he should have done a lot better. But it's, I don't know, it's one of those things where, oh, oh, if he just got it across the cane and cane, just banged it in, it would have just been beautiful. Or even if he just headed it in himself, it's just tough. But it does obviously go into decision making. It's a midfielder. If you've got a striker in that position, they're probably tucking it away. Like, it's all about decision making. And hopefully that's something which will improve. But I don't know, it's not, it's, not, it's hard to really say anything to be fair. Like, I was disappointed. It's a, it's a recurring theme going to Anfield. Like, you always feel disappointed after it, don't you? Like I was saying before to like to my, my streaming out in the community now, I was saying like, we'll get something out of this game at Anfield. Like, I'm not looking forward to it, but we'll get something out of this game. And I knew it was going to happen. And the fact that obviously when you touched on their chance and their, and their actual goal, which they scored, it's just such a Tottenham thing to happen. Like my dad called me up straight away after and was like, typical Tottenham. I was like, what do you mean typical Tottenham? He was like, no, not like us bottling it, but like, us conceding a goal like that, just conceding a deflection after we defended so perfectly all game, mm. just sat there heading out all their crosses because that's all they bloody do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just, I don't know, it, it was painful, man. I've just, I imagine if we'd won it last minute, man. It seems if we just literally snatched it off them. The tears from the Anfield lot, like, oh, it had just been Could you imagine how much worse Klopp would have been if it was oh, a loss? Oh, oh my God. God. Really God. Really <laughs> start, <laughs> well, listen, a part, like, I'd say like 70% of me wanted to win just because it's Tottenham. 30% of me wanted to win just to hear, see the tears, man. <laughs> like, just the tears. It would have been incredible, but it is what yeah, it is, this okay. football. And uh, I guess we'll fight another day and really see. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true. Like you say, it is frustrating. Obviously, the goal went in. Then you get a chance like that to come in. And you're thinking, oh, my Lord. Out of all people, it, it, why Hoiberg? Like, why is Hoiberg mm. entering that? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the way I see it is... No matter who it was, I feel like it's the it's the Anfield luck, and it's nothing to do with Liverpool. That it's just in general, there is always something at the end, whether it's in our favour, whether it's a late penalty to them. I was watching that whole game, thinking, please just do not give away a late penalty. To them. Sure. You know, so I, I I just think it's it's the luck when we're at Anfield. We, I mean, we haven't won there in something like eleven years. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's 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 just one of those things. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would have been nice to to have another moment like against City late on as well, just going mental. And again, obviously, because it's because it's Liverpool. And do you know what? As well, though, to be fair, I mean, I'm just I'm Klopp's wound up, and I'm happy it's dented their title, Charles. To be honest, just, you know, yeah, I, I might sound I might sound a, a bit, uh, yeah, a bit bitter with that, but yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just I'm just happy that that he, he can go off and and moan. You know, at the end of the day, they, they, listen, we're not out of it yet, so that's that's how I see it. So. And the fact that we're all really bitter and annoyed at Klopp, why don't we just bring it up next? And obviously, <laughs> it was that interview. And I don't know about you, but it did. I think it all drove us insane. The fact he's got the audacity to say what he said, didn't he, George? Yeah, I mean, it's just... Well, I, I don't even know what to say, really. Like, you just, it, I don't really like this whole thing nowadays that there seems to be this, this only this one way of football. It has to be this mega press, expensive, run everything down like way, like... It, it, there is different ways to win and Conte's proven it because he's won however many, what, five league titles in the last seven years like um, playing this exact same way. And it's not like it's... The, the way they talk about it, the way like a lot of the media talks about it, the way Klopp's talking about it, it makes it seem like we're literally just constantly sitting deep, just trying to grab one nils like this, that and the other. But we've scored the third most goals since the start of the year. Like Kane and Son have been on fire and we're actually like counter-attacking really well and actually putting a lot of passes together. We're not like as well from the defender's point of view. And, and don't get me wrong. I'm like, I, I shit myself in defense sometimes when this happens, but mm. we do pass it out from the back every single time. 
We're not constantly hitting route one long balls or anything like that. Like it's actually, it, it's good football that he gets the teams playing. It's just <clears> different <throat> to how Liverpool play good football. So it, it, I just find it baffling how everyone has, like a lot of people have this whole, oh, you have to play a certain way. And what did they expect us to just go there, play the way he plays and just let them score six goals and play into their hands? It's like, <laughs> what does he expect? Oh, this, but, on a, oh, sorry, go on. Go, no, go for it. Go no, on, this, this annoyed me so much. I'll be honest. Like this actually annoyed me because it's funny. Do you know why? Because, okay, so Liverpool, the way they play, they play with a high press. They want to pin teams back. That's how they play. That's their whole game is literally pinning teams back and pinning them in their area and just literally dominating. Every time we get the ball, they want to turn it over quick get a chance from it. Like, that's literally their whole game is pinning us down and pinning us back to our own goal. And he's going to complain about it. Like, that is literally how you set your players out to play. You set them out to press us, to press us and literally lock us in like a little box, like like closed animals or something, and then just attack us. Like, what do you expect? And also, if you've realised that wasn't happening, why didn't you slow the build-up more with Liverpool? Why didn't you slow it up and drag us out of our area a little bit? Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what teams do. Whenever you're playing against like a Burnley or like another maybe, no disrespect to these teams, but like a lower league team, you keep the ball back a little bit. You pass it out a little bit. You bring them on forward into you. But then they didn't want to. From minute one, press, press, press. Pin us in our area. Cross, cross, cross. Like, this is what George was saying about, obviously, like, can't they be able to adapt and play different ways of us? Why didn't Liverpool do that? Why were they so, like, consistent on just, like, pressing, pressing, blocking us in and just hoping for a goal? Because I guarantee you, if they had scored a winner, he wouldn't be moaning about the way we played. He wouldn't care. He's got his three points. Yeah. But he just he was scared to adapt and scared to change and realise, you know what, Tottenham are sat back. We're pinning them back. Let's let's invite them onto us a little bit. Let's knock the ball around maybe, like, a little bit longer with, like, Van Dijk to, like, our fullbacks and stuff. Let's suck them out. Let's get let's get Tottenham's win-backs out a little bit and let's get him behind. But no, he didn't want to do that because City would do that. City would definitely do that. If City realised that Tottenham was sitting back and stuff, they'd try and soak us out, which they have done before. They've brought us out and then they try and get in beyond with their players. But that's what annoyed me so much more so about his comments. Like, I understand him saying about the fifth place and all that rubbish. Right, he's, he's obviously annoyed. His team's just lost. Like, he's passionate about he's passionate about his club. I get that. Because us as football fans, we feel the same way whenever, like, maybe, like, we play the game where we've been dominant in possession. We've had a few chances, not many, and we feel like we should have probably come out of a win, but not maybe come out of a win, but like the team probably should have come on to us a little bit more. But it is what it is, it's football. Get over it. Change the way you're doing it and change your style of play. Like you don't always have to be press, 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 like block us in, like drag us out a little bit. Like it's, it's a you problem, not a us problem. That's the way I see it. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just crying. I know, I'm with you. And it is true. <laughs> like you say, you've got the players to change it up. So why not switch it up? And like George says, you're not, we're not going to set up so you can thrash a 6-0. We're going to make it difficult for you, isn't it, Connor? That's that's the way you play football. You've got to make it difficult for the other side. Honestly, mate, oh, I could go on about this for hours. He, oh, he is always so bitter. Like, <laughs> it's not going to go his way. His comments are always like, you know what? I don't know. It's not Spurs related, but I remember years ago, I think they ended up drawing a West Brom or something. And he was like, well, why does it matter to them? They're already relegated anyway. And they weren't even relegated at the time. Like, he's, he's like... Yeah, at the end of the day, he's bitter because Conte got it right. And not just that mm. as well. He can say what he wants about it being boring football, this, that, that. But it's not boring. We score goals. We create chances. You know, we went and scored three away at City. What, I don't understand what, what he wants. Like, it, it works. And it wins titles. And we're not bored. We're engaged. It's not a Mourinho sit back, win one nil sort of thing. Don't get mm. me wrong. Liverpool were trying to create chances. But... It, you know what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to slag off our defence for being so well drilled for for taking it all on and you know taking the chances that we were creating. I'm, I'm not having it, mate. I he's, yeah, just he's always got he's always got something to moan about. Uh, and it's it, it's also a bit like it seems a bit pointless because he knew how we were going to play. He said it exactly. before the game. He, he said exactly. that oh they play this sort of while this kind of they're one of the best counter attacking teams. It's like okay, so you know how we play then deal with it, do the tactics to deal with it. But they didn't. They stuck with their guns because that's what they know best. And it didn't work. It played into our hands perfectly. So exactly. he only has himself to blame. Of course. And he's probably bitter that he didn't set up, sorry, he's probably bitter he didn't set up a system to to counteract what Conte was doing. If, if, he, if he knows what he's doing, then he'll have a plan B. And he didn't have a plan B. You know, all right, he started Diaz because Diaz was on form from the Real game. But, you know, where was your plan B? There wasn't one. And because it didn't work, he, yeah, he just took it out on us. Exactly. So, yeah, 100%. And that's yeah. the thing Sorry, as well. I'm like, really... that, That's fine. No, it's a good therapy session. That's what I like to call <laughs> it. it. It's true, though. Like you said, they have, I wouldn't say, they have a lot more players at their disposal than we do. So there's no way we're going to let them 
roll us over if that makes sense we're going to make it difficult for us and like you said I think he is just a bit sour because even on the preview and had the guys on from last week they're like he's going to play the same way he's not going to change the way he plays mm. and he knew that we were going to play counter attacking football so why didn't he switch it up I don't know like you said I think he's just very very sour uh, like uh, Devon says um, but <laughs> <laughs> before we move away from that game I just want to pick up obviously the Fabinho incident um, and I know lots of people have mm. mentioned it in the comments so far and I haven't brought it up till now but George I'll come to you if this was Harry Kane, say, that had done this, you wouldn't not, you would hear it for ages and ages there and ages. There would be carnage. <laughs> oh, there would be carnage on Sky Sports. <laughs> it would have to do an interview again. They'll show him the replays. They'll do, the they'll do apology. a lot. The apology. The apology, yeah. You'll have to go give him, give Fabinho presents or whatever if it was against him and all this, that and the other. Yeah, it's ridiculous. That's where the bias comes into it as well, though. And we, it's not the, it's not the first time we've seen this where like a team that is challenging for a league or whatever it may be is the team that gets the sort of luck and the benefit of the doubt in these sort of situations. And it honestly baffles me how it's not been looked at at all. Um, at the time, I didn't even know it happened. Saw it all like all the outrage after on on like Twitter and whatnot. But how many times have we seen Liverpool fans or even Klopp himself complain about little decisions that weren't given, like that? that the, how bitter and sour they were when um, the handball for Man City against Everton wasn't given. But at least that was looked into. Yeah. Like, this wasn't mm -hmm. even considered for VAR. And that's the whole point of the system was to, to, to give a referee a second chance to, to see something that hasn't been seen. And it was a blatant, blatant red card. So, honestly, it's, it's unbelievable the amount of stuff that they get away with. Hmm. And, and that's the thing. It just it winds me up because, like you said, the, the VAR is there to help. So Devin, why why is it not being used in this in this instance? I weren't I weren't surprised, man. <clears throat> I was sat there like as soon as I see him laying on the ground, I mean as soon as I saw the replay, I was like, all right, well that's that's obviously going to get looked into. Like so, I was just just sat there waiting for him to say, right, it's gone to VAR, but no VAR. So like, all right, whatever, boring, boring. Mm -hmm. I've not really got much of an opinion on that. To be honest, like it's, it's one of those ones. It's a red card challenge. Like it's a red card challenge. As simple as that. Like he's led in with his arm. Like don't get me wrong. Like if I was a Tottenham player, it happened to I'd be like, oh shit, we're in trouble here. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've been, mm. we're, in, we're in trouble here. But like, I don't get me wrong, I don't like seeing them given, like, just leading in with your arm and stuff. Fair enough. Like, I prefer the game to go on, but at the same time, it is a red card. Like, I don't look, I don't mind a bit of like argy bargy getting in there, getting in some like bit of dirty challenges, a little bit of like tactical, like dirty play. But when it's ones like that, you've got VAR there, it's the letter of the law. Literally, get him off. Mm. It's stupid. And he got away with a, he got away with a lot that game, by the way. Yes. He got yes. away with a lot. Yes. Literally, like, it, when his second challenge yes. coming, I was like, all right, the ref's going to probably book him. Didn't book him. His third challenge come in. And that's when Kane sprinted over to the ref and was like, ER, mate, what's going on here? Like, one, two, three, like, and no, you know, he got away with it. And it's, it annoys me because these players, don't get me wrong, Fabinho is a quality player. Like, he's been brilliant for Liverpool this season. But these kind of players get away with murder. These Fabinho's, Rodri's, Fernandinho's, like, they all get away with murder. Yeah. And if, if Benton Core goes and does something like that, or Hoybeer goes and does something like that, he's getting booked. He ain't getting away with like stopping a counter attack. I think was it was it him who stopped pretty, the I was gonna say I'm pretty well. sure that happened in the game. Yeah. I think he, he got the booking first, and they everyone, obviously, like you said, I think Kane as well went over and was like, Well, hold on a sec, or Dyer went over yeah. hold on a sec. That it's just happened three times like a minute ago with Fabinho. So what's going on? Obviously, so I don't want to sound like I'm crying because I kind of am crying, but at the same time, like <laughs> it's just one of those ones. Like, just be consistent. Just be consistent. I think every fan wants to see consistency, even if it's against us at like even if we're at the like brunt of it, I just want to see consistency. And as simple as that. And when we get that, then VR will be great. I do think VR is good. I do think it's good, but it could be better. Mm. And that's the kind of examples where it could be. Yeah, exactly. I think it's like you say, it's the consistency thing again, because you see some game, you see some don't, but it just, it baffles me how he's gone in with that much force, Connor, and he's just gotten away with it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Honestly, again, as as uh, George and Demet said as well, it, it's, it's a case of, you know, it, it wasn't his first challenge. He'd had, what was it, three challenges before, then he finally got a yellow. Like, for me, the issue is not VAR, and um, again, I'm not here to just pick out people and this, that, the other, but it's the officials. It is consistently, you've got VAR to do a job. So someone in his ear has got to be telling him, go and have a look at that. Just just go and go and check the screen and, and have a look, but but they don't do it. At, at the end of the day, it's it's a challenge that is potentially a red card offence, you know. So why not use it? Why not just go and look at the screen, and then if you've decided it's not a red, then at least you've actually had a... Yeah, I'm, I'm just... I'm not having it. It is... Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It is what it is. It is <laughs> Pretty it is. much. That comment's really made me laugh, by the way, in the chat. Oh, no, I can't <laughs> ignore it at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it is right our biggest achievement, all right? Get over it. It is our biggest achievement, all right? We took six points off City and we got two draws against Liverpool and we messed up their season. It is our biggest achievement. If oh, anything, we, we just made the Premier League interesting. Otherwise, City <laughs> would have run away with it months yeah. ago. So. Exactly, exactly. Now, I think Liverpool fans have a short memory, by the way, about that. We did take six points off City. Yeah. We are a big reason why you're even talking and screaming about a quadruple. But let's just not get it twisted. What, anyway. what was that we, 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 we're responsible for uh, 25% of the drop points from City and Liverpool. This that season, surprise me. Which is mental. Little old Tottenham, eh? We're going to put that in our trophy yeah, cabinet, ain't right. we? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> that, it's, now. it's not quite over yet, is it? Because we do have the North London derby just around the corner. I must say, I'm a bit nervous for it. But it is happening on Thursday. Mm. And obviously, we need to get the win not only for our pride, but also <laughs> to catch up with them lot down the road. So, George, how are you kind of feeling mm. for this one? Um, not as nervous as I thought I'd be at this point, to be honest with you. Only because I think we've obviously had a good, we've got a good track record against them the last few years at our home ground. So, um, and I know that obviously that that draw, um, even though we probably, probably feel like we should have got a win against Liverpool, that draw has still helped us with my, our momentum because... Listen, we just we've gone and drawn at, uh, away to one of the best teams in Europe right now, and we felt like we could have won. So the players are going to be totally buzzing. And I think even Dime said as well in his, his his interview after that they just want the game to happen now. Like they, they want to play them, they're buzzing. Um, and I think there are there are definitely opportunities to exploit Arsenal as well. Um, with Tierney being out for the season, Party being out, their, their defense isn't that good. They, they've just played teams recently that have either bent over to them. Or they don't have that final quality that's gonna that's gonna get them goals. And even then, look at Leeds yesterday; they they were pretty much battering them. I'm getting started still, with that, George. <laughs> but they still only just got away with a oh, with a two one win oh, against the ten oh. men Leeds that played dreadful. Yeah. So I think get, have Kane, Son, Kulusevski up top, but we've got no problems in my opinion. I love I love the options. It is true because obviously the last previous games they've had, maybe apart from Chelsea, I would say they they have managed to get a bit lucky. And obviously, Leeds yesterday, I don't know what the keeper was thinking for the first goal. Oh, don't. <laughs> it's crazy. And when you say lucky, right, United played all... No, not awful, sorry. No, United played awful. Chelsea played awful against them. I've never supported Chelsea before, apart from the Europa League final. I didn't mind Chelsea beating Arsenal because I can't be Arsenal yes. like down the road talking <laughs> yes. about this. Even though I don't like Chelsea fans either, but it's one of those ones, isn't it? But Chelsea played awful against Blimmin' Arsenal as well. Like, I can't believe it. And obviously, against Leeds, oh, bro, I just sat there and thought, even though Bielsa's is not the manager anymore, I thought Bielsa ball, right? High tempo, like just, just, just at, at their necks. I thought this is what it's going to be. Also, we're going to get put under pressure here. But when I go and see them concede the goal with Mez there, I, I was losing my head, and I was like, you know what? It's fine. I guess we'll get to it. When they concede again, then mate boy gets sent off. Alien gets sent off. I'm like, this, this is a bloody, it's an absolute joke. Like, what's going on? And now it makes it even worse. They, they won two one. And I generally think if Leeds had 11 men, they could have probably brought that back and got a draw. But it's it's one of those things where it's our own fault. It, I know it's hard to sit there and say, it is our own fault it's happened. Like, we've let Arsenal get into that position. We, we hit a good bit of run of form where we were ahead of them. Well, obviously, they were ahead of us. We brought it back. We went ahead of them. And now, obviously, we fell off a little bit. I and mean, then they went ahead of us. Like... It's one of those things. But in terms of the game Thursday, I am looking forward to it. I do usually get a lot nervous more than I am right now, similar to George. Like, I do get usually a lot more nervous, but I'm looking forward to it. Like George says, like, Tierney's out, Partey's out. Like, that's a big chunk of the reason why they've been good on the Arteta and, like, been able to, like, be good when attacking as well. Like, as much as I can't stand Tierney, he's a decent left back for him. But I'm looking forward to um, Kulu feasting on Tavares. Can't wait. Cannot wait. Um... But yeah, I think it's going to be a good game and I just can't have them boys securing Champions League football out of our ground. I really can't. I can't deal with that. So I do think we're going to win. I'll be real. I think I don't think we'll keep a clean sheet. I think we'll win like 3-1 or something. I think we can score goals. And I think, like Dyer come out and said, how like the players are looking forward to it. And, like, a lot of people have come out online and said, like, we're going to make this atmosphere absolutely incredible. I think it's going to be a mental, mental game. But as long as we win, all we can do is win. And just take it on to the next game. Even if it goes down to the last game of the season, which if we win, it probably will end up going down to the last game of the season. But I just want it to go down to the last game of the season. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it has to. 100%. And like you said, and like the King said as well, that obviously if they do beat us, they do qualify for Champions League. So, <laughs> Connor, we've got to go all out, haven't we, really? 
Oh, mate, honestly, right. I've I've never had a North London derby where I've actually felt this confident they're actually going to win, which might sound insane, but I just feel that. Oh yeah, the recent the recent games, the Leeds won. Leeds put it on a plate for him, like without a doubt. The Melier mistakes, Alien and ex Arsenal boy getting himself sent off. Do you know what I mean? It was all sort of, it was all very easy for them. Exactly, exactly. And don't get me wrong, like uh, uh, you know, watching them in care, to and score goals for them. They're looking, they're getting a bit of rhythm. They're getting, but I just think, you know, knowing it's the North London derby, knowing it's a game where we can get top four. Well, we we, we can we still got a chance of getting top four. The atmosphere is going to be mad. I'm, I'm, I'm that confident that the atmosphere is going to be that good. And, you know, that like uh, like Denman said as well, I think Decky's going to feast on Tavares because <laughs> without having that dig at Emerson, Tavares and Emerson have had that competition this season about who, you know, <laughs> who's, who's not. Who's not yeah, he couldn't help himself. He has to just slip that in the mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know what? I love Emerson. I love Emerson. Um, um, <laughs> I will, no, I'll tell you what, I will love him. I will love him if he puts in a good performance on, on Thursday. I will love him. But no, I, I'm I'm actually confident that we'll that we'll win that legit. Um, I just think that, and as well, saying this, I and I'm I'm actually confident we can get top four because as long as we don't bottle it to Burnley, as long as we go to Norwich and we get that win, even though they already relegated final game of the season. Because realistically, they've got Everton and Newcastle. Yeah. Everton have picked up a bit of form. They're, they're down there. Newcastle got battered by City yesterday, but they've started to, you know, gel a little bit under Eddie Howe. They're looking all right. They might even get sort of, I think they can still get top half. I'm not sure. Do you know what I'm saying? So I feel personally that, that yeah, that, that we can, I feel, I feel that we're going to win. And I feel insane saying that because I hate saying that with anything. I just feel that, that this is ours. I feel like everything is going to gel and it's going to be a good night. A hundred percent. I so... Mm -hmm. Hope so. I think, like we said, the fact that we, we played so well against Liverpool, it didn't pay off entirely to get the three points. But seeing teams roll over for us and you are kind of thinking, all right, we are we have got to be in this driving seat. And I think we are. So I'll do the old age thing of giving a score prediction, as I like to do. So, George, go on then, mate. Would you like to not jinx, jinx us or jinx us? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as much as uh, obviously I think we're going to win and be the better team. I feel like it's just, it, it, it's not, I don't think it's going to be like a goal fest. I don't think it's quite going to be the sixth one that I said in the comments as much. <laughs> don't get me wrong. As much as I'd love for us to bet them, I think these games are always, always a lot closer than than we kind of want them to be. So I'd say a 2-1 a, a squeeze Spurs win and we're going to be sweating for most of that game. <laughs> <laughs> so a bit like Liverpool, fabulous. Yeah, like the sound cool. of that. Uh, then what are you kind of thinking? Um, I fancy us to get, I think we're going to start off well. I think I know that's really rare. Like it's usually like the other teams who start off well, and then we get into the game. But um, I think we're going to start off well. I think we'll get an early goal. Um, I do think that it will go. To, I think we'll end up being two one to us, but Arsenal will put us under some heavy pressure. I mean, I think we'll snatch one on the counter and win three one. Whoa, that's what I, I reckon. Like I'm going three one like that. <laughs> I'd love that. that. I'd love that. That would be good. It's always um, better when you're under pressure in it. I mean, you go and bag one and it's like, yeah, have that. Thank you. Right, I'm fine now. I'm chill now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Connor, what are you thinking as well? Is that the kind of vibe you're going off of? Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it, said it better, to be honest. I'm, I'm thinking too, I'm going to go 3-1 as well. I think, um, I think, yeah, we will. I think we'll be ahead and then all of a sudden they'll score, be a bit of pressure late on. And then, you know, that counter-attack, which is working so well, will, I mean, they'll definitely score without a doubt. But yeah, I just, yeah, 3-1 without, without a doubt. I've, 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 I'm confident with that. Yeah, Aww. I think the thing the thing I'm looking forward to the most is the atmosphere. Though I think it's going to yeah. be the best that we've seen because the fact that it's, it just means so much. And we obviously we haven't really been in the crowds for the last couple of years for the North London Derby. What was it like a thousand people last last mm. year, and obviously no no one before that. So I think everyone everyone's just got to be up for it this time and just make it an absolute nightmare for them. Absolutely, it's got to be rocking. I mean, I'm quite lucky that I'll be going to this one as well, so I'm very excited. Um, it's going to be a long drive home afterwards, but. Like you say, if, if we're on our A game, the stadium's rocking. I, I can't see anything more than a, than a Spurs win. And like you say, pushing on for that top four because it does put the pressure on them. Because I think now until the end of the season, like it has been this weekend, we play before them. So the pressure will be on them every week if we're only a point behind them. But yes, fingers crossed that we do manage to, to get the win because I don't know if I can live with myself if we don't. But... I want to say a big thank you to you guys joining me tonight. It was nice to dissect everything in Liverpool and look ahead to, obviously, the North London Dar Derby. Demon, I'll start with you. Where can everybody find you doing your thing, my friend? Um, just on, like, Twitch or Twitter, really. Just to, under my app, just jdenman9, stream on Twitch, FIFA mainly and stuff like that. Or just on Twitter, just 
talking nonsense about football pretty much. So yeah, either either of them that'd be cool. It's just Jed and Manana across all platforms. Love that, love that. And thanks again for joining us. Connor, thanks where can everybody me. find you doing your thing as well, my friend? So I'm uh, CT's McLovin, you're on TikTok. Uh, I'm CT's McLovin Footy on YouTube. Um, I'm uh, I'm Total Tweets on Twitter, but I should tempted to change it to my TikTok name. Um so yeah, so yeah, I I I'm tweeting a little bit more about football as well. So um yeah, come come say hello. Love that. Thanks again as well for joining me. And George, where can everybody find you doing your thing as well? Yeah, it's just uh this this at here, George Achilles pretty much on everything, mainly YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok here and there as well. Just yeah, follow up, keep me up with the match days and um hopefully it's gonna be a top quality vlog on Thursday. Oh, when we win seven yes. 0 Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. Um, and I want to say a big thank you to everyone else in the comments. Thank you for tuning in and all that good stuff. Um, there will obviously be Holly Sports Fest live next week, but obviously tomorrow I will be doing a live preview uh, with Albert J TV. And he'll have two of his Arsenal mates on, and I'll have two of the guests that you would have seen on here. And then on Friday, we will have a post match as well. So that's some exciting stuff to, uh, to get our teeth into. But I just want to say a big thank you to Dan that's just come in with a super chat before I go off. Uh, Thank you very much, Dan, for that. I do appreciate it. And like I say, hopefully uh, we can get that win against uh, Arsenal. But until next time, like I always say, come on you Spurs. Mm -hmm.